Mm. So here we are, getting into it. <laughs> getting into kindness in the outer world and how we can perhaps uh, take some of this inner kindness that we've cultivated and sprinkle that stuff everywhere that the world totally needs it. So um, let's have a look at our external re um, interactions and how we can perhaps bring more kindness to them. So um, why the Yamas, I believe, have stood the test of time and are as relevant now as they um, were before is that they are less rules, less rigid rules and more about um, being a guide and that they are, um, so they translated from the sutras which is from the word thread and so it's pretty loose. It's not this rigid you must, it's more this how can I um, how do you interpret these um, uh, sutras, these threads? So non-violence or kindness, how do you interpret that in all your interactions in the external world? And it's completely subjective because, um, you know, Deepak Chopra, he says it so beautifully, you've probably heard me say it before, that we've all walked through different gardens and knelt at different graves. And this means that we all have a different um, life experience and so we're going to see things differently and that's a beautiful thing, that is a really beautiful thing. So let's um, explore how we may harm others in relationships. And so, of course, there's the overt way um, that you probably know about, but then there's, let's explore the more less, um, the less obvious, the more subtle ways that we may harm others. And it could be through um, manipulation, subtle manipulation or control of a situation it could be through something like sarcasm. It could be, um, you know, culturally as Aussies, we have this tall poppy tearing people down instead of maybe we need to, uh, and even humor is a way that we tear people down. So instead, how can we lift people up? How can we... Um, see the light in them and and lift their light up or make them see their own light as well. That could be another way that you could work with that. Goodness, parenting. Whew. How do you practice ahimsa in parenting? It's not that the kids should have the run of the place. It's not that. It's, um, you know, sometimes it seems like their whole world is falling apart when you want them to go to bed at a certain time or don't let them go to a party. And how can you, um, you could maybe think of it more rather than harm, you could think of it as, um, discomfort. So as a parent, you're, yes, there's going to be uncomfortable situations. It's not that you are harming them by your um, parenting discipline, but rather seeing that as a, as, a, as a guide. How can you teach them? How can you teach them through your actions as well? And um, so that's just a few ideas there, but I'd love to know how, what do you interpret um, your own perhaps harm that you have done and how can you reconcile that? So in um, the Buddhist teachings, they say, well, how can my choices maybe uplift another's um, increase another's happiness and maybe decrease another's suffering. So that's their marker for the, the choices that they make in their interactions, not only with other people, but also with the world. So this one is um, to my dear activists, activist friends. Ah, oh, with all my love and compassion, I have to say a couple of things. Um, 
I love your enthusiasm, love, love your passion and your drive in the world. And at the same time, careful, haters don't gotta hate. Um, the thing with activism is that passion can be driven by this uh, deep hate. And in order, as we explored last time, uh, in order to uh, develop this hate for another or for a situation or for uh, a, a movement or for it, you have to first conjure that hate in yourself and I know it might have been a I might have been an impressionable young thing but I when I read the Barbara Ann Brennan book um, Hands of Light she's an energy healer she talked about when um, illness happens it often happens first in the outer field that we have this um, you know we're out in our in our aura there's maybe like a dark spot and or a gray spot and then it starts to move closer and closer and so our negative emotions are pictured in through Kirillian photography you can see these dark patches and that um, anger for another or for a situation or for the government or for whatever it is it um, it it resides in us so careful careful so rather than uh, in, in Barbara Ann Brennan's book, she then talks about it getting closer and closer to the physical body and that until it um, moves into and um, uh, solidifies as some sort of disease in the body. So just careful of all of this hate. Um, it, it is entirely possible. <laughs> I know this hate can kind of work the opposite way. I had a run-in with an angry vegan and after 26 years of being vegetarian, I started to eat fish and now chicken and I've justified that to myself and it's, um, yeah, just careful. It can go the other way. So there must be a way for you, dear activists, to, to put that energy and enthusiasm and, and passion forward in a positive way with love in your heart with joy in your heart so that that is the experience so I know that it has to be possible Nelson Mandela did it Gandhi did it they both incited massive cultural change in a peaceful way in with a kindness to them so um, just putting that out there and for me when I see this inner this outer conflict that um, is projected outside it is usually showing an internal conflict as well so again doing that inner work to find that kindness and compassion to self that may be uh, inspired and reflected outwards big hugs love 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 and love your passion too just so passionate thank you for your, all your energy so let's explore into the outer world now and this is you know the the layers of choices that we have as being human is is just it's it, it's massive it's diabolical it's um you know as soon as you start to go down this rabbit hole you see how massive it is our choices that we make um you know all we can do is do our best to be ethical to be uh, sustainable to reduce waste to maybe choose locally made to um the 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 choices that we have are it's exhausting it's it's absolutely um, it's not impossible but it's it's a, a difficult one so you need to make the choices I think the litmus test for this one is can the choices that you've made with your purchases with your food choices with your um, uh, you know driving your car uh, flying in a plane it's it how do you reconcile that I think that does it make you sleep better at night? Can I look at myself in the mirror and go, yep, yeah, I did the best that I could. 
did the best that I can with the choices that I made. Um, and there are no rules, so it was not written in the sutras that you need to be vegan. It wasn't written anywhere that you... It, actually, the, the sutras were written for someone who is really, remember it's that up and out model. So they are looking to, the body wasn't important. The body wasn't important. So they weren't making choices for, um, is this going to make me healthier and stronger? Um, they were making choices based on how can I get out of here? So we as householders are making choices that are about how can I nourish my body in the best way that is going to then give me the energy and sustenance to go out there and make the world a better place. And maybe that is the choices that you need to um, make in yourself. And what is it to you? So by all means, share your findings below. What is it to you? So I feel like the, the planet just made such leaps and bounds. We had all of these, um, you know, keep cups happening and all this less uh, less waste happening and then COVID hit and just the mountain of waste with that but you know we had to do what we had to do all of the sanitizer getting washed down the drain and at the moment we just have to do what we have to do it's not a, a place to get judgy it's not um about that but rather how can we reconcile it in ourself i know i waste is my thing so i i was sick of buying uh, slippers every year and decided no i'm going to buy some good proper ugg boots and i've had them for about 10 years and that just like as a, a vegetarian that was like oh can i buy ugg boots and i was so much happier to buy the ones that lasted rather than go through some every year so um what is it to you and that so it's not like i said it's not a place to judge everyone else's choices but to really go in and explore our own choices and how can we reconcile that and how can we sleep better at night how can we justify our decisions you know i when i sit down and eat fish i have a blessing for it and thank you for all the food you know for the the lettuce and the vegetables as much as for the fish may i ingest this and may from this um, sustenance may I go and do good things in the world and help others decrease others suffering and hopefully increase another's happiness ah, so good luck with that one there are no rules and we as Westerners have been brought up to love rules you're probably sitting there like Vanessa, just tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. No, it's your decision. It's completely your decision on this entire spectrum between black and white. We are in this full gray spectrum and doing the best we can and doing the best that we can for others and for ourselves and for all beings and for the planet and um yeah it's a big one so lots of love and thank you thank you thank you for doing this deep inner reflection and i see you doing this and thank you so much and um may you polish the cloth on the polish the mirror so you may see your light and then see the light of others Big hugs to you. Lots of love. See you. See you again next week on Monday. I'll um, do another video for uh, the next one. Truthfulness. See you.